Now we say no ordinary auction, no ordinary cars, and we really mean it, which is why today I've come down to take a look at this recently consigned Ford Pop hot rod. This hot rod started life in 1955 as a Ford Popular. The Popular, or Pop as it's fondly known, was built between 1953 and 1962, and at launch was Britain's lowest priced car, around £390 including tax. So why has the pop become such a popular hot rod? Well, for a start, they weren't expensive to acquire. Their basic architecture meant that they're easy to work on and modify, and crucially, they're lightweight. Of course, this particular car has come a long way since its humble beginnings, and whilst it might look like something you'd only use on a drag strip, it is, in fact, road legal. The ambition with the car was to create a street and strip pop, meaning it can compete on the drag strip, but is still able to be driven on the UK public roads. Just look at how this thing sits. I mean, the front is so, so low, almost perilously low if you were gonna go over any kind of speed bumps. And these arches curve in one lovely piece right over the front wheels, almost all the way down to kiss the tarmac. The nose of the car is dominated by these elongated kidney grills, and they're flanked by these big, bold headlights. And then perching ominously over the top of that is this enormous air intake, which has actually been beautifully sculpted into the bodywork of the bonnet. The paintwork on this car is a work of art in itself, and it's actually called Organic Candy Green. And the chap who painted this car referred to it as the seaweed car because of these sort of green and black flares that are coming down the side of the car. But when I look at it, I think it's got a more sort of menacing look of the green goblin. The name of the game of hot rodding is of course to have a big block at the front and then the rest of the car to be super light. So the front end is all fiberglass and the rest is a mixture of steel and then plastic windows replace heavy glass. The chap who originally commissioned this car spared no expense on the engineering and design and architecture of this car. And you can see that when you walk around all the finer details and we'll have a look under the bonnet later to see that magnificent Chevy block. But then you can see these lovely little quirks and personalization elements on it, like these little skulls here on the wing mirrors, which were added so that when it is used on the roads, you can see what's behind you. Moving down the side of the car, we've still got some period features like the door handles and then these lovely period indicators, which flick out the side as you're changing lanes or directions. And then below that, we've got exhaust the size of a clenched fist down here, and there's one either side. I'd love to see those when this car is at full boost. You must have huge flames spitting out either side of the car, It'll look magnificent. And then we move on to these tires. They are massive, these beautiful Hoosier tires. Now, these aren't just here for cosmetic looks, they are actually designed specifically for drag racing, and they look magnificent. Look how big they are. I can get my hand all, all the way in there, and I'm not even touching, well, just about touching the wheel nuts there. Hoosier have been making competition tires since the early 1950s, when Bob Newton, their founder, was frustrated by the limited sizing options and hard tread compounds. The Hoosier name was chosen to reflect the origin of Bob's racing routes on the short tracks of the Midwest. Today, Hoosier produce over a thousand different types of race tyres, among which are these specially designed for drag racing. The width of these things needs to be seen to believe. You can't quite see it probably on the camera there, but they are literally about this wide. They almost cover the complete width of the car. It's something you might expect to see on Dick Dastardly's car or something like that. And then we come to the wing at the back of the car. Big enough not to be out of place on a Boeing, but no, it's on this 1955 Ford Popular. But we've got these lovely Ford decals to remind us of that. And if that wasn't enough, the insanity continues below this huge wing because we've actually got a deploying parachute at the back of the car. So should you decide to be brave enough to take this down to Santa Pod and race it, then you have got the means of stopping this beast. 
It even comes with this tasteful remove before flight tag on the back of the parachute, although I wouldn't recommend deploying it on the school run. Things might get a little bit spicy. Now, before we look at the interior, let's just have a look at the block underneath the bonnet here. The power comes from a 385 cubic inch Chevy small block with aluminium Edelbrock cylinder heads. The chassis has been designed and constructed to withstand the rigours of a seven second quarter mile pass and is accompanied by the very best running gear available. Off the line, the automatic transmission will shift into second after you reach 8,000 RPM in first. Right, let's take a look on the inside of the car. Okay, well, the interior stripped out and lightweight really is the name of the game here and we've got this full roll cage and you've even got this cage which is specifically going over the driver here but then the passenger is also very heavily protected. There are so many cool features to look at in here. We've got these lovely Kirkley Racing sports seats with the Simpson harnesses. Behind that we've got the most enormous bottle of nitrous oxide NOS sitting in between sort of the driver and passenger shoulders. I mean that really tells you the intentions of this thing. There is no messing about. When we say it can do those speeds over the quarter mile, when you look at that you absolutely believe it. Now the gauges on this car just span all the way across the dashboard. We've got the fuel level, the water temperature, the nitrous gauge, the oil pressure and obviously your speedometer right dead center in front of you. Now, of course, we've got a detachable steering wheel and that's nicely mounted up here. You can see you can take that off and then just mount that on when you get into the driver's seat. It makes it much easier for getting in and out. And above the driver, we've got this really easy sort of command panel, which is actually much easier to use and to press these buttons when you're in a harness than trying to stretch forward and touch things on the console at the front. Now I just jumped in, it's quite snug in here to get a closer look at the console and the variety of different buttons that you've got on here for your side lights, your fuel system, your fans, and all of that kind of ancillary buttons that would otherwise have sat on the dashboard there, but is much easier for you just to be able to reach up here and, and use this control panel. Now this lever above you here is something that you don't want to accidentally knock with your hand or your head as you're getting in and out of the car because this is what deploys the parachute at the back. This lever here isn't actually a hydraulic handbrake, it is actually the transmission and it's fully automatic. And what's cool about this is that when you're on the drag strip, if you were ever brave enough to do so, it automatically selects second gear for you so you don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel when you're launching off the line. Right, I'm going to quickly switch seats and then we'll go through the startup procedure. I'll put the steering wheel on and we'll go for a little drive. Right, so once you've slithered your way past this roll cage and into the bucket seat, you actually sit quite far back and the pedals feel quite far forward so your knees are quite kinked in this position. First things first though, let's get the steering wheel on and then I can take you through the startup procedure. Right, so this is the opportunity to use this control panel which is mounted nicely up here. And so we have to go through a few of these little buttons. So first of all, ignition. That goes on, this red light comes on. Fuel system. Auxiliary one. And then engine start with a bit of throttle. What I was trying to say to you when that was all going on was that it is monumentally loud, but you probably couldn't hear that. But look, we're going to go back through that process. We'll start her back up and get her out on the road. Thank you. 
unlike anything I've ever been in. Or ever seen on the road for that matter. Now you might not have been able to hear a word I was saying when I was in the car, but buying a car like this opens a whole new world of automotive culture. This isn't merely a vehicle to go from A to B, it's a car that opens up a new way of life and certainly leaves your ears ringing a little bit. So if you're looking to live out your very own Santa Pod fantasy or you just need to scratch that hot rod itch, go check out the full listing of this car over on collectingcars.com. Thanks for watching and see you soon.